Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. Again, we're Tim and Holly Nyquist. If you'd like to communicate with us, you can do so through the, the blog spot, doubleroadrover.com, or through email at thn.academia at gmail.com. In this series, we are going to be combining now culture, uh, worldview, and into a concept of origins and to show how our culture and therefore our standpoint and from which we view the world and how that influences our, our, our grid, our, our theory of how we look out at the world and how that comes up uh, influencing the area of origins. This has been a, an interest of mine for a long time is the area of origins. And uh, as I've mentioned before, it's just the the, the handling of the, the differences of the different models of origins um, sometimes uh, gets very uh, negative and uh, personal attacks and sarcasm. And, and that was just something in an area that, that I was not interested in. And I was more interested in understanding where each model uh, was coming from and um, what made each model and how, did, how come so many different models exist um, and, and be supported by uh, intelligent, um, schooled men, many uh, holding their, their doctorates in those areas, and yet there seems to be disagreement. Going back to Stephen Jay Gould's um, comment, or, or that, co that quote that we've been using, in that not all reasonable people see things the same way. And he listed four factors and uh, of what influence a, a, a person's view of the, the facts, of the evidences. And he listed culture as being uh, one main, one of the four. And we, we went over culture and how culture um, cultivates within us a thinking pattern and a concept of the world and in discovering the Weltbild concept of, of the Germans that incorporated culture as, as developing a standpoint and a point of, of standing firm in and viewing out at the world through that standpoint. And uh, then we saw how that, that he then went on from culture, Stephen Jay Gould went on from, from culture to prejudice. And prejudice is the the basic belief system that we develop. And it's, it's, it's not a prejudice in the negative sense, but it's, it's to prejudge. And so to, to judge anything or to evaluate, we have to have a network, a, a, a grid pattern. We have to have guidelines. And so that is where the, the, the prejudice comes from, is the, the basic belief systems that come up out of our standpoints, that come up out of our chosen source of reliable knowledge. Then Stephen Jay Gould goes on to, after we have our prejudice, then that forms a, a system, a theoretical system, a theory. And theory comes from, from the Latin or Greek, which, which uh, means spectator, to look at, to look out at. And so it's uh, what we do is we form a grid of how to look out at something and how to understand. It's kind of like going to another country and tasting new foods for the first time. And what's it taste like? And it's kind of like, well, it tastes like chicken, you know, or, or, or something. It's that we are experimenting something new, but passing it through our grid that we already know. And, and that's how we, we add information, is, is by comparing it to what we already know. Then uh, Stephen Jay Gould says, after the theory, which is a framework of, of looking out at the world by, then we, we form a habit of looking at the world and what we expect to see. And, and that is uh, the four factors that, that we've looked at. And what we're going to look at in this series, this part of the series, is, is looking at a non-Western biblical basic belief house. And that's kind of a mouthful, but basically what it is, is we're going to take and look at Christianity is a very strong influence in our culture and has been for, for centuries. Uh, but Christianity is built on a, a set of beliefs 
and writings from a non-Western culture. And there can be confusion, there can be uncertainty let in when we um, apply our Western tendencies to a non-Western um, document, to a non-Western um, thinking patterns. And so what I just want to do in this series is to look at, through non-Western cultural eyes, the biblical basic beliefs. And so what we're going to do in, in this series is, is we're going to build a house of all basic beliefs, of, of what the Hebrew people, from their perspective, of what they believed to be true and that they had received it. Now, in their, their format or, or their thinking processes, the, the basic, basic beliefs of this house are from a non-Western cultural perspective. And we have to understand, uh, going back to almost the very beginning of the series, when we lectures, when we went over 21 differences between a, a Western and a non-Western type of thinking pattern and how we think differently. And uh, as I mentioned before too, is that when, when you travel um, via like airlines, and something and you travel a great distance in a short period of time, you get off the plane and you realize immediately you're somewhere else. You're in a different culture that thinks differently, that speaks differently, that processes things differently. You smell things different. And, and it's just um, the cultural perspective is, is, is different. And so what we're doing is we're going to be looking at the biblical basic beliefs, but not from a Western perspective, but from the perspective that wrote them, from the perspective of the people that, that wrote them and received them, and how they took them and believed them to be. So that is what we are going to be looking at in this project. And so it's kind of like in the, in, in the worldview, what we had looked at before is that worldview is one of three concepts that the Germans developed to protect their own national and personal identity. And it wasn't, worldview was not the base. It was, it was, it was Weltbild, which, which means world picture, that the world picture is formed first through influences on us. And so this here is ground zero is the Weltbild. Ground zero is that every house that's built has to sit on something. And so this is sitting on the Weltbild of a non-Western uh, cultural tendency. So this is based on life experiences, the surrounding environment, surrounding culture, and then the beliefs that are based in that. So these are all the influencing factors. And it has a series of symbols on the bottom there. Those are symbols from uh, building plans that indicate uh, grounding, the ground circuit. And so what we're doing is the house that we're going to put up is grounded on this type of thinking pattern, a non-Western type of thinking pattern. So then we're, we're kind of looking at, okay, what, what does that look like? What does a non-Western thinking pattern look like? Well, just to give a little review and to go back and um, see some of the major points of differences or, or strong points of a non-Western uh, cultural tendency. And the, the first one, which is a big one, and a difference is between the Western and, and non-Western tendency, is that they do not believe in separate domains of things like we have been brought up and trained to think. We have been trained in, in separation of, of church and state, of, um, of natural and supernatural, whereas they don't think that way. They think more as there was a creator and everything else was created, and there's fluid movement between what was created and its creator. There are no bars, there's no separate domains of, of natural and supernatural domains, worlds. They put them all together because they live in a world that is influenced, the material world very much influenced by the, the spiritual realm. And, and so they, they do not separate. So that's an important 
item to, to take into consideration is that when they are, are experiencing life, their life, they experience all dimensions within that one domain. So it's, it's creator and created. And um, so and that leads us into number two, which is the universal operating system. Uh, universal operating system is like, okay, what, how does the world, the universe function? How do we think it functions? Does it function like a machine? Meaning it's a closed system that is going to operate by, by laws. And those laws, it just keeps producing and functioning and we're just part of the machinery. And that there is no interference. There can be no interference in the machinery. It's a closed system. This, the non-Westerners do not believe that. They believe they are in an open system, a system that is very much open to its creator and what was created. Now, scriptures talk about what was created, where it was powers and thrones and principalities were created. So what they believe is that it's an open system that is open and governed by its creator and other created power sources. They are believers. They tend to believe. They believe in what they cannot physically see, but they understand and sense the presence of something that is unseen. So that is a universal operating system. It's an open system. And that's an important um, difference between the, the Western and non-Western to understand in, uh, in what we're going to be building in this house. Based on that, that open system and that there is a God, there is a creator out there, and not just out there on the other side of the universe, but outside of themselves, within the same physical area, they are very much um, towards external authority. It's called the locus of authority, where the authority is located. For most of us Westerners, we are taught uh, to, uh, for an internal, it's developed an internal authority within us so that we, by the time we're 18, we're making our own decisions. We are uh, on our own. We are independent. We're autonomous. We are, and, and we don't think about consulting other authorities for our personal life and personal decisions or needs, but they are very much trained in in obedience to submission to an outside external authority. And so they are very dependent and cooperative between them, not competitive because they are together worshiping, they are together building, they are together. So it's, it's very cooperative in their, uh, in their life attitude. So external authority is, is a very strong tendency within them. And lastly, these are just some of the tendencies, the 21 tendencies we had gone over. These are just four of them that I've picked to, to illustrate the, the, their way of, of seeing things. And what would be their sources of reference, okay? In other words, their reference thinking, reference material, what, what category does it fall into? And what I'm trying to say here is that they are historical, they don't use allegory. They don't use fiction. They don't use mythology. They didn't. They used historical um, history events is the building block of their thinking pattern. And so it's like their God, who was their God? Well, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. And so in other words, their God concept of God was built upon historical events that built from the past. And so they look to the past, not to the future. They look to the past for their concepts and their concept of God and their concept of the divinity and their concept of the world. It is built on their past historical events and, uh, and, and happenings. So that is a difference because for us in, in the Western uh, mindset, we are more forward uh, projecting and, and not really historical. We, we, we project forward and, and that leads us sometimes to enjoy 
uh, sources of reference such as science fiction. It's fictional. And our, our basis of our reading system or our library system, it's either uh, fictional or non-fiction. So in other words, we start with fiction. And then if you don't want fiction, then you go non-fiction. Um, so in other words, our way of thinking being forward or being futuristic is also um, somewhat fictional. It's, it's, it lends to be uh, in, in the fictional uh, category. So, but their category is more concrete. They're very concrete thinkers. And so when they think, and I could go back to maybe even many of my students, when they read, that they are very visually orientated. And so when, when they think and they hear something, they generate pictures in their mind of that concept. And if they hadn't experienced it yet, and they don't know how to picture it, then comprehension uh, suffers. So this is where we're at. Sources of reference is historical. Okay, so based on that, we're going now to our, our foundation of the house, which is our source of reliable knowledge. What would be our source of reliable knowledge? Now, I know many of us have never thought about it, but this is a concept that is part of academics and it's, it's part of philosophy, but we all choose a source of reliable knowledge, one way or another, without even thinking about it. And so in the university systems or, or philosophy, they have recognized that there are generally four categories of sources of reliable knowledge. The first one is intuitive knowledge. And intuitive knowledge is internal, internal knowledge. It's, it's an internal source. It's intuition. So it's, it's inside of me. And it's not based on reason. So it's, it's more of a, I just know it. Uh, it feels right. So it's more of a feeling type of source of knowledge. The second one, authoritarian knowledge, which means knowledge comes from outside of me an outside source that has a, a, I give the authority to to tell me what is true or what is reliable. And so authoritarian knowledge could include um, people. It could include literature or books. It can include divinities. Um, so whatever reference point outside of me would be an authoritarian knowledge. The, the third one is logical knowledge. Now, logical knowledge is different from in, intuitive or in, intuition knowledge in that logical knowledge is internal also, but it's based on reason, human reasoning, not emotion. So it's, it bans kind of emotion from the process, and it's just pure reasoning. And uh, so that is the third one, but it is still human reasoning, logical knowledge. The fourth area or category is empirical knowledge and that's based on empiricism and what that means is the five senses and so it's not based on human reason as much as human senses of of experience and so that would be the five senses but the the chief sense in this area would be would be sight uh, vision and so it's observation uh, so those are the four um, main categories of sources of reliable knowledge. And since we're building a non-Western house, the major source for a non-Western house is number two, the authoritarian knowledge. And we are building not only a non-Western house, but we're building a specific non-Western house from a specific culture because that culture has so much influence around the world, it's, we're focusing on the Hebrew culture and its writings. So what we're looking at is authoritarian knowledge that then revealed truth and reliable knowledge from the outside. And it's not outside because it's an open system. So the system is open and knowledge is revealed to man. Um, this is different uh, because in a closed system, uh, you cannot have revealed knowledge because the system's closed. So uh, 
this is where we're going to be starting, okay? We have our foundation. We have actually ground zero, which is the Velt build, and, and that is the, the tendencies, the cultural tendencies, the thinking, the beliefs, and the, 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 the pattern that, that kind of um, molds me into a certain current, certain way of thinking. So it's a non-Western cultural tendency is under the foundation. And the foundation is external authority. And that external authority is revealed biblical, revealed revelation, revelation, biblical revelation, knowledge, which means it's an open system. So this is the first series or the first lecture of building a non-Western biblical basic belief house is that we start with the non-Western tendencies. We start with what a non-Western tendency would, would prefer as a, as a foundation of where they get, where they, where they go to for reliable knowledge, and that it is an open system. So those are points that are uh, a lot different from what a Western type of cultural thinking pattern would be. So we're going to continue building this house. This is the foundation. Then we're going to put up three pillars, a floor, two more pillars, a floor, and a roof. And so just like a concept of the other houses, this house is going to follow the, the same type of, uh, of concept of, of building. So I, again, thank you for accompanying me in this, in this journey. And uh, we're going to continue building in the next series. And uh, hope that you join me. This is, uh, we're Tim and Holly, Nyquist. And again, there's the information if uh, you'd like to contact us. Thanks again.